In today's video, I will show you how to set up Cypress to perform end-to-end -end testing. So to start, go to this link and download Node.js. Once you've successfully downloaded Node.js, just open up your terminal next. And inside your terminal, just switch to the folder that you want and type in this command npm init-y and hit enter. Once you type in that command and hit enter, you should now see a file called package.json. Now, if we go back to terminal, we can just type in npm install Cypress and hit enter. And this is what it should look like once everything's been installed successfully. We can now start Cypress by typing mpx Cypress open and hit enter. And here we're given two options. Just click on end-to-end -end testing. Once you're on this screen, just scroll to the bottom and hit continue. And just use Chrome as our browser and hit start end-to-end -end testing in Chrome. And this is a screen you should now see. Just to make it easy, we're going to click on the first option that says scaffold example specs. And here, just click on, okay, I got it. Now we can see that Cypress has created a bunch of different examples for us to look at. And the easiest example to look at is the very first one here. So just double click on it. And as you can see, it's actually running the test once we click on it. On the left-hand side here, you can see all of the different tests that's running. To make this easier to understand, we can now go back to our code editor and open up Cypress and open up uh, the end-to-end -end folder and click on getting started. And here's the very first test that we just ran. As you can see here, this example has a bunch of comments explaining exactly how the tests run. However, now I will paste a basic example of a Cypress test that I made myself. Before I switch back to Cypress to visually see the test running, I'm just going to briefly explain what the code is doing here. And so starting on line three is just a description of the test, which just goes to a basic web page. Then we actually visit like www.google.com. And once we're on google.com, we're then going to check if the word Google is on the page. Now we'll switch back to Cypress and rerun the test. And on the left-hand side here, you can see exactly what's going on while the test is running. The first thing it does, it visits google.com. And once it visits the page, then it checks if the word Google is on here. And if it does, then we'll see that the test passed successfully. Just an example, I would not change the test so that it fails. So instead of checking for Google, if I just check for YouTube instead and hit save, and now if we switch back, we can see it does the exact same thing as before, but now it's trying to check for the word YouTube. But because the word YouTube is not on this page, we can see that it errors out. And this is the error message that it displays. Now I will go through another example that's a little more involved. So I'm gonna switch back to my text editor and paste in this other example that I have. And before we go to Cypress, I'm just gonna quickly explain what this test is doing. So this test would just query Google and check that the search term is on the page. Just like the previous test, we're gonna to go to google.com. Then we target the Google search input box by getting its class name and then typing the word YouTube. And to quickly show you how I found the class name for the Google search input box, I'll just go to google.com and go to inspect element and then just click here. And as you can see here on the right hand side, that the class name is exactly what I typed in in the code example. Now, if we switch back to the code, what the next line does is that it clicks on the Google search button. And when I say the Google search button, I'm talking about the Google search button here. However, if we look at the code, instead of using the dot get command, I'm using the dot contains command to click the button instead. While I could have used the class name to target the button, I instead just used the contains command to show you a different way of interacting with elements. And since the Google page only has one button that has Google search, then I know it's going to click that button. However, if there are multiple buttons or multiple elements with the word Google search, then this would not work properly. And for the very last line here, this is just the actual test where we're checking if the URL should have the word YouTube in it. Now I will switch to Cypress to visually see how the test is running. And I'll just restart the test. And as you see here, we're typing the word YouTube into the Google search input box. And then we're just checking that the URL contains the word YouTube, which it does. And as you can see here on the bottom left, that the test passed successfully. And now I will show you another test where we check for a specific text that's on the page. And I'll just paste in the test. And what this test does is that it checks that bootstrap.com is displaying the navbar items on desktop. By default, Cypress will run all your tests in desktop mode, specifically in dimensions like stated here, which are 1000 width by 660 height. However, if you want, you can also change the dimensions so that we can test for mobile devices as well, which I will show in the next test. For now, if we go back to the test, we can see that we're just going to check the desktop version of getbootstrap.com. And we're just going to make sure that it shows each of the nav items correctly. And how I'm doing that is I'm checking that each of the nav items text is actually on the page. If we look at the first one here, I'm just using the contains function to actually target the docs uh, nav item. And once I've done that, I just use the should function to tell it that it should actually have the text of the word docs. If we switch back to Cypress, 
and we run the test, we can now see we're on bootstrap.com and now all of our tests are passing as all the NIV items are being displayed correctly. In this next test, I will show you how we can change the screen dimensions so that we can check the mobile version of this website. Going back to Visual Studio Code, I'll just paste in this other test. And here, we're just going to go to getbootstrap.com. On line 7 here, I'm switching to dimensions. So now it will be 300 width by 800 height, which will represent like a mobile device. If we look at line 8, I'm just checking that the class navbar toggler should exist, which represents the navbar component, which only shows up on mobile devices. If we switch back to Cypress, I'll rerun the test. And as you can visually see, now the device size, it represents a mobile device and it passes a test as the navbar toggler class is present because we're on a mobile view and not the desktop view. And those were all the examples that I have for this Cypress tutorial. I will also include a link where you can copy all of the examples that I showed throughout this video. Hopefully you learned the basics of how to write your own end-to-end -end test. If this video helped you in any way, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.